So remember these? The late 90s and the early 2000s was full of colorful translucent devices. From computers to phones to music players, this era offered all people a chance to be expressive with their product choices and in my opinion was when technology design was truly at its peak. Oh my God. Now before you start typing, hold on, what exactly is good design? Well, this has a lot of different answers, but I really liked ChatGPT's answer where it describes it as a combination of form and function that is aesthetically pleasing, easy to use, and solves a problem. Wow. It's a balance between beauty and practicality. Now, examples of good designs can be found pretty much everywhere. Some are incredibly functional and aim to solve existing problems, while others are more aesthetically pleasing and invoke an emotional response for their visual appeal. Now, take a look at this. One looks super unique, fun and innovative, full of life and energy. The other, well, that's the Xbox Series X. Huh? What are you smoking, you might be asking. But ignore the specs for a moment. Can you honestly say that the one on the right looks objectively better than the one on the left? If you said yes, then I'd like to ask you what you are smoking. Now, I don't mean to just shit on the Xbox, but it does seem that the physical designs of tech devices have gotten a bit stale. You can see it most recently with modern phones. Everything kind of just looks the same, differentiated only by internal specs. This is my favorite one so far. Form over function, as they say. Less is more, simplicity, and minimalism. These are all key design terms that have been pretty popular in modern times. So let me be clear. The late 90s and early 2000s was a very experimental time for tech. Bruh. Things were rapidly changing in the space, and one could argue that the general standards for tech design hadn't been established fully quite yet. Consumers didn't really know what they wanted, and as soon as something worked, well, companies would flock to mimic it. Consumers were also interested in expressing their individuality through their purchasing choices. Sure, this is still the case now, but how much personality does your iPhone 14 Pro Max Space Black 512GB really show? While this phone may look a lot like the iPhone 13 Pro Max that came before it, there's actually a lot new here with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. During this time, designers began to focus on creating devices that were more expressive and delightful. Shapes were sculpted with care and colors were selected with an eye for whimsy, resulting in a tech landscape that was as aesthetically pleasing as it was functional. Sure, there was still a lot of questionable stuff out there, Bruh. but it didn't take itself too seriously. After all, it was still very early. There was still this sense of imagination, and designs kept leveling up until what is often referred to as the clear craze of the early 2000s, all beginning with this iconic device. Designed by Jonathan Ive, the iMac G3s were truly the first of its kind. It featured a colorful translucent shell and a unique curved shape as well as an integrated handle on the top of the monitor that made it easy to move around. Its all-in-one nature uh, meant that it also saved valuable desk space. It was a radical departure from the beige, boxy designs that had dominated the PC market for years, and it was an absolute hit. The consumers loved it. In fact, it was the iMac G3s that helped Apple establish themselves as a company that really cares about design and aesthetics. It wasn't just a computer, but a statement piece that expressed the user's personality and sense of style. It was, in all sense of the phrase, a work of art. There were a total of 13 different colors you could get this in, each curve having been meticulously considered, creating a sense of harmony and beauty that went beyond a sort of um, utilitarian purpose. The focus on rounding also helped make this computer more personal and approachable. Even back then, Apple always had a knack for changing the mainstream public's expectation for how products should look and feel. In fact, this wasn't just limited to personal computers. By the early 2000s, multicolored translucent plastic designs had become common among consumer products. It set the stage for a design era that emphasized innovation, color, and personality. And it was a defining moment of how a technology can be both functional and beautiful.
Now, of course, we have to talk about the rise of translucent consoles. From the original Xbox to the N64, almost all consoles during this era came in or had some sort of colorful translucent variant that had really captured an entire generation of youth. Perhaps one of the most iconic was the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance in translucent purple. Now, these were pretty insane for its time and helped inspire the imaginations of gamers young and old. Nowadays, we have quite a lot of devices that take heavy inspiration from this look. Nice job, team. It was playful and perhaps even elevated the gaming experience. I mean, even if it wasn't translucent, there was always something about the designs that came out during this time that was so comforting and approachable. It was a perfect size, every curve, every detail made it feel personal, compared with the sort of sleek and almost soulless devices commonly found today. Even decades after its release, the translucent Game Boys remain a symbol of timeless appeal and design. And again, an example of how technology can be both beautiful and functional. Now, from this point onwards, depending on where you stand, things started to go a bit downhill. If you haven't agreed with anything up until now, I'm sure you can agree that everything, and I mean everything, made from the mid-2000s onwards started to take on a more cold, minimalistic look, and might I even add soulless. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for the concept of less is more, but oftentimes this comes at the expense of truly unique visuals. Interestingly, there were several factors that have contributed towards this trend. The increased focus on functionality, advances in tech, user demand for simplicity, and the influences of minimalist design movements. As tech became more integrated into our daily lives, the focus shifted from flashy designs to devices that were more functional and easy to use. A big proponent and influential figure was the German industrial designer Dieter Rams, who worked for the consumer electronics company Braun until the late 90s. Now, Rams was a huge advocate of less is more, emphasizing the importance of simplicity, functionality, and user-centered design. Function came over form, and his work at Braun helped to standardize a minimalist aesthetic in industrial design that has since been widely adopted by every single tech company. There was also an increased demand for simplicity. Many users preferred devices that were simple with minimal visual clutter. Modern designs meet this demand by removing all the unnecessary embellishments this is not cool. and reducing the overall complexity of the device to make it as optimized as possible. This timed with the rapid advancement in manufacturing tech allowed for more sleek and minimalistic designs that were not really possible before. Take laptops for example. We used to have crazy ass designs like all of these. Now it's just kind of the same thing. A standard keyboard layout with a big minimal trackpad in the middle inspired by Apple's MacBooks. Look at your monitor. If it's anything but a black rectangle, I'll PayPal you $50,000 right now. So, the physical artifacts we surround ourselves with every day should be designed to improve our lives. I also believe it should look really good and make us feel good. The design era of the late 90s and early 2000s was characterized by a focus on innovation, color, and personality. They weren't just devices to be used as tools, but also pieces of art to be admired. Of course, there was a lot of trash out there, but I'm not sure about you guys. But as I look back on these designs today, I can't help but feel like I want some of these back. Back to a time when tech wasn't just about how clean it looks, but also how unique and quirky. Where design wasn't just about removing things in the name of simplicity. So what does the future look like from here? Well, for starters, we know that trends always come back around. In fact, we can already see elements of Y2K coming back into design trends, especially in fashion and interior design. While it hasn't been adopted into big tech or consumer products, a lot of manufacturers and even users have modded their devices to emulate the look of the early 2000s. This also depends on the technical landscape. Um, as far as we know, there are about four big developments in the works that could potentially contribute to another huge shift in design. AR VR, flexible displays, wearable tech, and everyone's favorite buzzword, AI. Considering the complexities of these technologies, it's a little unlikely we see a full revival of the early 2000s aesthetic. 
screens may become so large that the experience may wholly depend on what's coming from the screen, rather than any physicalities of the device. However, I'm pretty confident that the variety of designs will increase, resulting in a growing demand for beautifully crafted, unique tech products. As people become more digitally aware, and as devices become more integrated with our personal lives, I genuinely hope we're able to see some aesthetically pleasing see-through plastics once more. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I'm interested to know what you guys think. Are you a fan of minimalist design trends? Do you like where tech is headed? Let me know down in the comments below. And I hope you have a great rest of your week.